Hello guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll be talking about pattern searching algorithms. And in this specific video, I'll be talking about the naive pattern searching algorithm. So there are three different types of pattern searching algorithms. So I'll list them down. So the first one and the most uh, brute force, if you would call it, is your naive algo. All right. This is the most basic one and the most kind of you can say it a uh, trivial one like it, it people don't really use it because it has uh, you, you can say that the time and space complexity are not ideal for this algorithm next up we have a rabin corp algorithm which i will di be discussing in the next video of this playlist so the next algorithm is the rabin corp algorithm and this is a step up from your naive algorithm in terms of uh, space and time complexity and the most efficient one is your KMP algorithm. This is amongst these three, the best algorithm that you can use for pattern searching. All right. So let's dive into this video where I'll be talking about the naive algorithm. So the naive algorithm basically, so in this pattern searching problem, what are you expected to do is that uh, your, your problem statement would be you have a text string of some size and you have a pattern string. So what are you expected to do is look for the instances where your pattern occurs in your text string. Okay. So I'll be uh, covering an example regarding this algorithm where it will be more clear. But for now, that's the problem statement that given a text string, find all the instances where you can identify a pattern in that text string. Okay. So in this particular algorithm, the naive algorithm, we are going to be using our uh, window sliding technique. Uh, for people who don't know what the window sliding technique is, it's basically a common like kind of tool that you use to solve DSA questions. You, you take a block of some particular size and you slide that block one by one till you cover all the your possible cases. So that's called the window sliding technique. We're going to be using this in our naive algorithm. So as I mentioned, you, you're going to be sliding the pattern one by one and check for a match. So sliding pattern one by one and check for a match. All right. So that's what you're going to be doing. So next up, if you found a match, so if a match is found, then what are you going to do? You're going to basically print the index of print the index where you find the match and then you slide your pattern. All right. And else just slide your pattern. So if you don't find your match, then no need to print anything. Just simply slide your pattern by one place. All right. So and you keep doing this process. For n minus m times. Now here n is your length of your text string. So say this is n and this is m and you do it for n minus n times right yeah. so uh, let's discuss an uh, example using this algorithm which will hopefully make uh, the algorithm more clear all right so the first uh, so let's say that you have got a string right which is C A B C B C A B C B. That's your text string. All right. So just to enunciate, this is your text and this is your pattern. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing my pattern the where the first character of my pattern is in the same position as my first character of my text. string. All right. So in my iteration one, I'll see if 
the first characters match if they do then i'll move on and compare the second characters otherwise i'll just slide my pattern by one so you see that c and a are different right so they do not match they're not equal so what i'm going to be doing is in my next iteration i'll be sliding my pattern by one place so now that a comes underneath a and the subsequent characters come underneath their uh, corresponding characters in the uh, text string so when you slide your pattern by one place you see that a is equal to a right so i'm going to be checking the next character of both the uh, text and pattern strings which in this case happens to be b and b is also equal to b so i'm going to be moving further and i'm going to be seeing that c is also equal to c right so i'm going to be printing this index so this index is of importance because that indicates that a pattern has been found at this index all right the starting of your pattern so now as i said in the algorithm if i scroll upwards you see that if a match is found you print the index then you slide the pattern by one place so i found a uh, match right so i'm going to be sliding the pattern one more time so now we can see that a comes underneath b now i'm going to be checking uh, the same conditions again is b equal to a no it is not equal to a so since it's not equal i won't bother uh, going inside and checking the next uh, or subsequent characters of my pattern because the first character is itself not matching so there is no point in checking your subsequent characters so we have not found a match in iteration 3 so what do you do we slide the pattern by one place and uh, check for our match so in it in our fourth iteration we see that c and a uh, lie on top of each other and it is pretty evident that c is not equal to a so and uh, once again since my first character is not matching i won't bother to check for my subsequent characters all right so this is if you can see uh, like now my pattern is being slided by one place right so this is your window sliding technique you take a block of 3 because in this case my pattern's length is 3 character and you keep sliding that particular block of 3 one by one till it covers all your possible cases all right so if i go further in my fifth iteration you can see that my pattern is is being moved by one position and so that b and a come on top of each other now b is not equal to a and since it's not equal i won't bother to check my subsequent characters and so i'll slide my pattern by one place next up in six uh, in our sixth iteration we see that c and a lie on top of each other now c is not equal to a so i won't bother uh, going into my checking for subsequent characters and i'll just move on so in my seventh iteration you see that when you move your pattern by one position You see that a lies on top of a, and a and a are equal. So I'm going to be diving inside, and I'm going to be checking my subsequent character. Now we see that b and b lies on top of each other, and they are equal. So I'm going to be moving forward and checking my third character, c and c. This is also equal. Since all of them are equal, we have found a match in our uh, text string. So this index is going to be printed and is of our uh, importance. All right. Now we found a match. We printed this index. Then we move on. and we slide the pattern by one more place to see that a and b lie on top of each other but they are not equal so we won't bother checking our subsequent characters now this is our the end of our process because we see that this pattern cannot be moved further uh, on your right right because you basically just uh, arrived at the end of your text string so that completes our process all right so that's your naive algorithm you this is also known as your brute force so this was the logical part and if you put that to code you get this so i have just uh, i i didn't bother writing down the code in uh, my text editor i just copy pasted here so first of all you see that uh, you in include these uh, headers and using namespace and this is our main function void search so in this case we have our two parameters that is your pattern po character pointer and text character pointer next up i define my m and n to be my length of pattern and length of text so this is basically length of pattern and length of text next up i 
make my for loop for int i equal to 0 this process goes up, goes up to n minus m times as I mentioned uh, in my earlier slide this keep repeating this process of sliding n minus m times and this i plus plus basically denotes after you've completed one instance of a loop you slide your uh, block further and then I defined another variable j in j so if j is equal to 0 for, so for j equal to 0 j less than m j plus plus so this inner nested for loop is basically activated whenever your first characters of your pattern and string match so basically this for loop gets activated when my first characters of text and pattern match okay so that's basically your for loop and then if you see that if j is equal to equal to m which was your length of pattern then you just uh, print a simple statement that pattern is found as index i because we print our uh, index at which the pattern starts okay and i was that per, uh, particular index so that's your code and you can also implement this with uh, various test cases and it will run usually for smaller test cases but uh, this is not really an ideal algorithm because it's your as the name suggests naive algorithm so the time complexity for your best case will be order of n this occurs when the first character uh, isn't found in any position of your string okay so this occurs when the first character isn't present in the entirety of the entire text string what this basically means is that since you've not found your first character the inner for loop basically just uh, you remove that from your uh, calculations right because that only gets activated when you find a match for your first character so that's your best case and worst case is of order m times n minus m plus 1 so this happens uh, for two instances your first instance when this happens is that all the characters of text and pattern same so all characters same and the second possible way when you encounter your worst case scenario would be when the last only the last character is different all right so that's your best and worst case scenarios for your naive algorithm. So that's it for this video. This That was the naive algorithm. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. And if you have any doubts, make sure to drop a comment. I'll try to address your queries. And in the next video, I'll be discussing about your Rabin Karp algorithm, which is a step forward from this naive algorithm. And yeah, see you guys in the next, uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.